Good morning, how's everybody doing? And welcome back to the channel. Today is a break from the truck and I have a couple of things I need to do on the motors. I have one of our other motors in here and we have already put the vacuum system on it. <clears throat> what it is, this is called a track vac and it runs off an auxiliary motor um, and then you turn your blades on on the mower like you normally mow and then everything gets collected up through the chute ground again through this impeller housing or squirrel cage if you will and then up and through into a brute trash can um, we started using those a couple of years ago when uh, we purchased or sold actually our other vacuum system it was just a regular mower um, with just a regular uh, a soft bagging system on it so that mower had well over 2,000 hours on it and it was just time to go so uh, when we purchased our other Dixie chopper we now have three a 44 a 50 and a 60 uh, we needed a different way to collect leaves um, <clears throat> we're one of only just a few in this area that does do leaf cleanup so uh, I found this track vac system to put on the back of the mowers um, I put one on the 44 and I also put one on my 60 inch and <clears throat> it, it, it's just a really really nice collection system uh, everything that I did I had to modify to make fit because they don't make an actual track vac that's supposed to fit on the Silver Eagle line it's the pretty much the classic and the Excalibur only there is some other collection systems out there there's one called Peco um but it's it's rather expensive and you know i picked both of these up for about 800 bucks for the two of them so 425 400 a piece um i do have one for my mower too uh this is my mower 60 inch um well i guess they're all my mowers they're all our mowers um the 60 inch is primarily mine um and then the 44 and the 50 they stay with dad <clears throat> so uh he can do cutting in different places so with that being said um i need to put something on my mower and i wanted to take just a minute here to show you what it is um these are a product from dixie chopper and they're called a magic mulcher and what this is and i'm going to put these on so you guys can see exactly what they are uh, Wismos, I've heard them called Wismos, I've heard them called Magic Mulchers. This is, and I don't know the part number, I'll try and look it up and put it on, uh, put it in the description below, and I'll also try and find a link for these and put it in the description below so you guys, if you want to pick some up, you can. Um, I do have several people actually that watch my videos on my Dixie Choppers, so um if this is something that you guys want to see more of i can do more videos of the mowers um i have a couple of oil change videos and welding videos okay lost my train of thought my son needed me for a minute so i had to go in and take care of that um he's wanting breakfast <laughs> uh he wanted to stop and get a gas station breakfast that's kind of a thing between him and i uh we anytime we go someplace or rush in the morning we'll stop and we call it a gas station breakfast so anyway going back I'm going to put those magic mulchers on the mower so you can see how they go on and also yesterday um, dad pulled the pull cord out of his mower so and then last week my pto switch went bad so i had to purchase one of those and put on there those aren't real expensive they're not too bad they're about 20 that's why I don't do sports. All right, made it that time. Anyway, those uh, PTO switches are right around $26 a piece. Not too bad. You can find them online cheaper, but um, I needed it yesterday. So I just went down to my local parts store, uh, which is my Dixie Chopper dealer, and uh, purchased those. So... <clears throat> With that being said, I'm gonna grab my impact right now and take one of my blades off. I checked my blades. I was gonna sharpen those also, but this time of year, they take a real beating with the grass, I'm sorry, not the grass. They take a real beating with the leaves as heavy as they start becoming. Um, and also another thing I do, 
this is like a little inlet. Um, you got one on each side. And I, I raised those up come fall too. <clears throat> and what that does is that allows more to and higher piles to go underneath your mower deck. Um, that way I can set my mower deck and down and mow just like I normally do and all the leaves don't push in front of me. They go under there, get chopped up and uh, go into my can. The main reason why I run these Wismos, Magic Mulchers, whatever you choose to call them is, you know, I've got a 60 inch mower and with just that little brute trash can, it, it fills up in a hurry. Now they do make a double trash can for bigger mowers like mine. Um, I just, and then it has a, a double cage on it. It'll have these here, it'll have them side by side. So I just have never found one for sale, so I've never purchased one. <clears throat> so. And I'm sure it takes a bigger motor too. I have that auxiliary motor. I have the Briggs and Stratton on mine. And then upstairs, I have two Honda engines. Um, one's a GX160. And I'm not sure what the other one is. It's a little bit bigger, but it needs uh, piston and rings in it. It's smoking pretty bad. Uh, those Honda engines are phenomenal. Uh, that's why I'm going to pay the money and fix that one because I can do it myself versus taking it to a shop and having it done. Um, Going back to the Magic Malters, I run those because it helps chop the leaves up quite a bit more so I'm able to fit more in my can because the pieces are smaller, if you will. It chops it up and I can fit more. Um, with that being said, I want to grab my impact, take one of these blades off, and I'll show you what and how these Malters go on. All right, we'll pull one of these blades off. Just pick the center one here. What you need to do is you have, this is how your blade is up on your spindle. You need to remove one of these washers and then, well, for the thickness of the Wismo, your mower blade goes on there like that and sits on there. And then you need to put your felt crush washer on first and then one of your spacers. And then it just goes back up on the spindle, like so. So as that turns, those go out and help chop the uh, grass, mulch, or leaves up, whatever. Um, that's exactly how they go in place. Um, also, I do run these in the spring of the year when the grass is thick and lush and it just helps beat that up a little bit so you don't leave them windrows. One of my biggest pet peeves on mowing is when you drive by a yard and you see them windrows or dead grass laying on a yard. I cannot stand that. I will not do that. And it just makes for bad business. And you know, it just, it just looks bad. So I run these in the spring of the year to help me clean up that grass. So with that being said, I'm gonna do the rest of these and then we'll get that pull cord uh, fixed up. All right, with that job done, we want to make sure and keep these spacers in a safe place. 
I just put them in one of my trays up here and then that way I'll have them for next year. Um, I can put them back on when I take my uh, magic mulchers off. Uh, what the reason taking those a spacer out or a washer out per se is because it allows for the thickness of the actual magic mulcher itself. So next up on the agenda, we need to take off this pull cord housing. You can see that he pulled it out of there. So take it off. It's just some quarter inch or five sixteenths to take that off. And then I can show you real quick how to rewind one of those. It's not difficult. It's not a hard job, but you know, some people just don't know how to do it. So what you're going to need to take this, uh, pull cord housing off is a 5 16th. I always use an impact. It just uh, makes things a lot quicker. You can use a ratchet too, it's not a big deal. And then something else I always use is a magnetic tray. This is just from Harbor Freight. They're cheap. Uh, actually, I think this was with one of their free coupons. When you buy something, you get something for free. So I use a magnetic tray and put everything in that. It keeps everything secure. That's what that looks like with that off um, and you can see it broke right at the end so all we're gonna do is take a lighter take that freight off on the cord itself and uh, you got to wind this and put it back in there so we'll go in there and I'll show you how to do that so what I like to do is I have this little butane torch there and I just I burn that just a little bit take all them freight ends off Just like so. This is also a Harbor Freight tool. Um, it uh, it wasn't a free one, but I think it was like $8.99. And the reason I like it so much is it is refillable by butane. So um, it, it, you don't have to buy the most expensive. It's just whatever works. I think they had a coupon on it for like, I don't know, $8.99, $5.99, something like that. Okay, with that being said, this is spring-loaded. So as you pull on that cord, it takes those cogs and comes out and catches on that little housing or cup that's on the flywheel. That cup goes inside here like that, and as you pull on that cord, those cogs come out and catch that cup, rotates the engine, and starts it. So what we need to do is we need to put preload on this spring, just like you have preload on your spring. Uh, coil shocks on the front of your car you put preload on a dirt bike suspension on the rear um, what we need to do is wind this um, and the reason you put preload and the reason you wind it is when after you pull on it you want it to spring back and pull this cord back into where into the pull cord housing where it goes so to do that you just take and turn it and then I catch it with my faint pinky like that just to hold it as I'm pulling it takes two hands and then I just preload it as much as I can and that should be probably pretty good right there it doesn't take a whole lot you can hear it right there it's coming to the end so that means that spring is completely wound so we just need to probably back off because we can't come right there's where your string will go through and right there is where your string will come out of. So I need to back it off just a little bit and get lined up with that. So to get everything together, you can grasp a hold of the, the outside frame or the housing and the internal uh, pull string or the whatever we'll call it, this pulley here. Take your string, put it through the hole and then through that hole and then you kind of got to do a one-handed tie kind of got to no you have to um, I imagine they probably make a tool you could use a pair of C channel vice grips to grab a hold of it but this is plastic this is metal and you just want to be very careful on how you put things together you know you got your mouth hang on to it with your teeth and then that's how that goes right there. So we allow that to come in. 
and then that's all there is to it. And then that way, when you pull on it, it goes right back into place. So that'll be sitting on the motor like that, and you pull on it, and it goes right back in. That's why we put pre. pre that's why we put preload on this spring. So after you pull it and start the engine, it pulls it right back in. Oh, so that's a wealth of information, isn't it? So anyway, guys, I appreciate you watching clear to the end, those of you that have. Um, I'm enjoying the heck out of doing these videos. It's something new for me. Um, I used to not be comfortable making a fool of myself in front of people, but this is making me just a little bit more comfortable. Um, this is me and just all of you who are watching. So uh, there's not a whole, peop a whole bunch of people around. It is morning. There is hardly anybody around. Well, except for some people over there. So anyway, once again, guys, thank you very much for watching. Give me a thumbs up, hit that like button, leave me a comment. And if you have not subscribed, please do so. Um, I have some other stuff planned, some stuff in the works with my truck. I have some product coming for my truck, um, and that'll be here. There'll be a video, a video on that, application video, uh, talking to some other companies about doing some different stuff on my truck. So uh, once again, thank you guys very much for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend, and we will talk to you later on. Bye-bye.